Okay, and the, um, first of all, thank you very much for the very kind introduction. And um, uh, I would first of all like to say um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. Um, I was uh, fortunate to be able to uh, combine this with a, uh, with a business trip that I'm on uh, uh, coming over from New Delhi. Uh, I'll be flying back actually a little bit later on today. Um, but before I start with my presentation, I would also like to uh, briefly introduce a colleague of mine, uh, because I represent, if you like, the India end of uh, American Airlines operations. And I have a colleague of mine, uh, Shashi Kamlani, who is our regional sales manager for the New York area. And uh, Shashi and his team um, take care of all of our, um, our sales activity from this end of the route over in New York. So we've tried to kind of come to represent both sides of the, uh, of the Atlantic, so to speak. Who's oh, okay. Everyone's looking at the back of <laughs> <laughs> So um, for, for my presentation today, what I wanted to do was to divide it up into, into three main themes. Um, the first one is uh, the overall importance and relevance of the SME segment to American Airlines as a company. Um, the other thing as well I wanted to talk to you about was um, our experiences um, of operating in India as an SME. Although we are um, one of the largest airlines in the world, uh, we are in fact, in terms of our operation in India, a small business. We employ about 60 people. Uh, and uh, through, the, um, through the history of our operation in India, I think we've gone through you know, many of the, the challenges and the successes uh, of actually starting up a small operation in India. So I wanted to kind of share some of that experience with you. And then um, the third thing that I wanted to talk to you about was um, the practicalities, if you like, of how you manage travel as an SME. Uh, you know, travel is an expensive, uh, it's a, it's an expensive business. Uh, and um, it's very important to manage it in a way that gives you the greatest possible value for money. And I want to try and give you a few insights into how I think uh, you can potentially achieve that. The last uh, few years in particular is that uh, the rates of growth that we're seeing in the SME segment are actually now starting to outstrip the rate of growth that we're seeing from our larger and more established corporate customers. So, um, you know, in our opinion, um, SMEs are really a critical segment of the market to have a strong presence in. Uh, and um, that actually, you know, belies itself with many of the facts that substantiate it. Uh, so very recently, as you may be aware, um, it was uh, the US National Small Business uh, Week, um, where a number of activities took place around the country to recognize and support the importance of the SME segment. And in recognition of that particular, um, that particular time, uh, we actually conducted a survey of approximately 20,000 uh, customers that we work with who are SMEs. They're either customers of our Business Extra program or other frequent travelers that use American Airlines a great deal. And when we actually conducted the survey, we got about 2,600 responses. And the, the, the statistics that uh, we got back, I thought were extremely interesting and I wanted to share those with you. I think the first and most important thing is that there's clearly a lot of optimism within the SME segment uh, right now. About 72% of the respondents of the survey that we conducted uh, took the view that the overall economic outlook was improving. So that's obviously a good sign. Um, secondly, and I think also very important, particularly for my business, um, there's a continued belief that face-to-face -face and personal interaction is a critical aspect of success as an SME. And about 64% of our respondents took that view as well, uh, which is obviously quite heartening for us as an airline, since that's the business that we're in. Um, and um, the other thing as well, which is also very important to us as an airline, is that about 40% of the uh, respondents uh, also um, said that they believe that their expenditure on travel is likely to increase over the course of the next year to 18 months. So if you take those statistics together, um, you know, the, the sense that we get is that the SME segment is a vibrant and healthy component of the economy and one that is important for us to, to be close to. However, um, the thing to bear in mind is when, when we conduct a survey like that, it is a, it's a somewhat US-centric survey. So the customers that we surveyed were primarily based in the US. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about how this kind of plays out from an international perspective. And, one of the things that we also are observing is that this, this vibrancy, if you like, that we're seeing in the SME segment is not only playing out with small businesses based in the US that travel within the US, but also companies that are looking to travel internationally more. 
And one of the things that we are also seeing is, is a really robust growth in um, the use of um, our international services by SME customers, not only on our uh, flight to Delhi from Chicago, uh, but also to many of the other emerging markets in particular where America has a presence, such as, for example, Brazil or China. Um, and I think there are a number of, kind of themes um, that really kind of um, you know, drive that. Um, the first one is that I think that more and more companies down the value chain or down the supply chain are realizing that growth of the best growth opportunities to be had are actually in the developing markets outside of the US. So we're starting to see much more kind of export driven or, um, or, or a service led um, SME activity in the international space. Um, and I guess one of the questions is, you know, why is that starting to happen? I guess part of it is to do with the fact that, you know, the U.S. economy has, um, has struggled somewhat over the last two or three years, and SMEs are therefore, you know, starting to look abroad for their opportunities. And secondly, I think it's also a very positive testament to um, the ability of countries, key, com of key markets like India, to create an environment that is positive for SMA activity. And you know, there are various things that drive that. One of them is, is, the, is the ease of access, the fact that um, India is accessible now with multiple daily non-stop services, including our own. Um, the fact that um, you can get to several gateway cities via Europe or um, even directly from the US. Um, the fact that um, uh, there are now lower barriers to entry, I think, to operating in India as an SME. Um, in this rapidly globalizing economy that we are seeing, um, I think we are finding that business practices are starting to become more consistent across different markets and therefore if you are, for example, a US-based company, I think you will find it easier than ever before to set up and do business um, in India. That's not to say it's necessarily a walk in the park, but it's, it's, it's an awful lot easier than it ever used to be. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to mention uh, the lower barriers to entry. And similarly, as I mentioned earlier on, globalized thinking, I think, creates an environment that is extremely conducive to bringing SMEs together from different parts of the world because you find that companies are now much more on each other's wavelength uh, than perhaps before. I think another thing as well, which is also helping uh, drive SME um, activity or, um, at, the, uh, at the international level, is the decreasing complexity of doing business abroad. Again, there's more consistency with areas such as taxation and law. Um, and um, you know, while the systems are still not necessarily perfect, again, they're much more masterable, if you like, than uh, they were several years ago. So I would say that, um, you know, um, to conclude, the, the SME segment, um, uh, from our perspective, is really a, a very healthy, a very fast-growing area of business for us to focus on. And it's one uh, to which American Airlines in particular is extremely committed. So that was really to kind of just set a little bit of the context. Um, what I wanted to do now was, just to, was to talk a little bit about, um, based on our experiences as a company, what it is like to, um, or what, what it takes, I think, to succeed in India as an SME. Now, Americans started operations in India um, just over five years ago, in November 2005. Um, Putting together an operation to a country like India is something that requires um, deep involvement and commitment from, from both ends of the route. So it's not just about setting up an operation in India, but it's also about ensuring that you have the resource and the expertise back at the head office level and amongst our US sales organization to ensure that that route is supported from both sides. So when we took the decision to go into India, it was a very carefully considered um, uh, decision. And in fact, at, at that time, it, you, one could even argue it was actually something of a gamble, uh, because we were one of the very first airlines to launch non-stop service from the US to India. And frankly speaking, at that time, a lot of people thought we were crazy. Uh, but now, I think uh, non-stop service between the two countries is really taken for granted. Uh, and um, in many ways, I think that's what people actually expect. So. It was a risky venture when we first embarked on it. And um, I think that as we've, um, as we've uh, done business in India over the last five and a half or so years, um, you know, there are various things that have come through from that experience. And I think one of the things which I find most fascinating about India, certainly from a personal perspective over the last uh, two years that I've been living there, is that it is a country of great contrast because there is this enormous rate of uh, growth and modernization uh, you know, literally the landscape in Delhi changes from week to week as, you know, new metro pylons go up, uh, a new flyover is built, and perhaps even more relevantly to us uh, in the airline industry, 
uh, you have things like uh, the new Terminal 3 at uh, Delhi Airport being constructed. And all of this is happening at an incredible pace. Uh, it took just three and a half years to build the new terminal at Delhi Airport, and it is a, a wonderful facility if you've not um, had a chance to use it. Um, but at the same time, I think one of the things which also comes through very strongly uh, from uh, working and living in India is that it's also a country where there are still very deep-seated traditions and values. And that's something that, you know, particularly as a US-based company, if you're looking to do business in India, you need to be acutely aware of. Uh, cultural sensitivity, I think, is critical to um, success in India. Another thing as well, which I think is also important in terms of uh, setting out the, the context of business in India, is that India does not revolve around the metros. Um, you know, there are six metros where most business, I'm, I, I would admit, is done. Uh, but what I find fascinating about India is what is happening beyond the natural gateways. So if you take uh, cities like uh, Jaipur or Ahmedabad or Chandigarh, um, all cities which are you know, within a reasonable distance of Delhi, either by air or even by road or rail, um, there are more and more opportunities to do business in these types of markets. So it's very important to kind of think of India not just in terms of those core gateways, but also as a place where there is vast opportunity beyond that. And again, in terms of you know, the infrastructure that you see in India, connectivity to those types of location is improving all the time. Again, you know, for example, with the new terminal in Delhi, uh, international and domestic flights are integrated into one place. It's very easy to make connections from one to the other. So um, that's really kind of a little bit of context um, about the, the environment in India as we currently see it. In terms of, um, of, of what I've described as the ingredients to success um, as an SME in India, um, I think these are kind of you know, the main tips, if you like, I would give to um, any company that is thinking of starting up operations there. I think the first and most important thing is to really make sure you do your homework. Um, you know, going into India is not um, something that should be embarked upon lightly. Um, you need to understand the business segment that you're going into. Um, you need to understand the, the, the companies and also the individuals with whom you're going to be working and with whom you're going to have business dealings. Um, I think a, a key attribute to doing business in India is the personal touch. Uh, people or customers often tell me that India is a high touch market. And I absolutely agree with that. Um, and it is therefore critical that you take the time or you invest the time in face-to-face in, in -face meetings and in networking, in fact, uh, at sessions just like this. Um, it's, it's vital to actually build up that personal rapport. And that also ties back into the, the, um, the point about doing your homework in advance, because it's not just about getting to know the companies you want to do business with, but it's also about getting to know the individuals who are behind those companies. Being able to kind of build up that kind of personal relationship and rapport, I think is absolutely critical to success in India.